Hi, and welcome back to Coco Sleep. I hope you're enjoying this podcast of original children's bedtime stories and sleep meditations designed to make bedtime a dream. Just talking to your adult for one second. If this podcast helps your little one sleep, please find the time to leave us a short review. It will help our stories reach more people and we'll be so grateful that you did. In tonight's story, we meet Prickles the Hedgehog, who loves going to parties and having a wonderful time with his friends. He loves seeing balloons at parties and thinks there's something quite magical about them. But there's a problem. No matter how hard he tries, Prickles always manages to accidentally pop the balloons with his spikes. His friends see how upset this makes their kind friend so they come up with a clever way to help him. This is Prickles the Hedgehog by Gillian Rogerson. One afternoon in Sleepy Forest, a little hedgehog called Prickles was on his way to a friend's party. He absolutely loved going to parties. He loved having a dance with his friends and playing fun games like musical chairs and pass the parcel. The food was always delicious and he especially liked the cucumber sandwiches and the strawberry trifles. He always had the most wonderful time at parties. But the thing he loved most of all was the balloons. There was something so magical about them. They came in such an amazing variety of colours and looked so big and bright. He'd even seen some that had silver glitter inside them. It wasn't only round balloons that he'd seen at parties. He had seen long balloons too and one shaped like numbers. Prickles smiled as he remembered a special party he'd been to recently. It was the one he'd never forget. A magician had been at the party, and he had made long balloons into lots of different animals, including a hedgehog, who looked very much like Prickles. But even though Prickles loved balloons, there was a problem. No matter how hard he tried, Prickles always managed to pop the balloons. He didn't mean to, it just happened accidentally. One minute he would be minding his own business and having a good time at the party and somehow a big bright balloon would come his way and land on his spikes and then pop. And it was never just one balloon. Others would find their way to him too. And then pop, pop, pop. He just didn't know how it happened. None of his friends ever minded. They cheered when the balloons popped, and then they started to pop them too, until all the balloons had burst. It was good fun, but Prickles preferred the balloons when they were big, bright and beautiful. As he walked closer to the house where the party was being held that day, Prickles hummed happily to himself. He wasn't going to accidentally pop any balloons at the party. Not even one. He had a plan. A very clever plan. And he was absolutely certain it was going to work. Prickles arrived at the house where Scamper the squirrel lived. It was her birthday party and she was one of his best friends. Prickles knocked on the door. It was opened by Scamper's mother. She smiled at him and said, Hello there, Prickles. You look different today. Have you done something different with your spikes? Prickles nodded. I've put some hair gel on to smooth them down. I'm not going to pop any balloons today. He gave her a big smile and handed her the present he'd brought for Scamper. Scamper's mum put the present on the hall table with some others. Then she led to the room where the party was being held. To Prickle's delight, there were balloons everywhere. 
resting on tables, piled up beneath chairs, and fixed to the bottom of the windows. Bright reds and blues and vibrant yellows and greens. There were even silver ones, and they were much bigger than the other ones, and they had gold glitter inside them. They looked so magical to the little hedgehog, like planets in the sky. Scamper ran towards him. Hiya, Prickles, thanks for coming. She gave him a closer look. What have you done to your spikes? Prickles lifted his chin proudly. I've put hair gel on them. And now I won't pop any balloons by accident. What do you think? Scamper told Prickles to turn around. Prickles did so and then waited for his friend's response. Scamper said, You look different, but I like your new look. Do you still want to play some games? We're just about to start musical chairs. Oh, my favourite, yes, please. Prickles ran after Scamper and joined his other friends who were jogging around a line of chairs. Joyful music was being played. Prickles waved to his friends. They made room for him in the line and soon the little hedgehog was dancing in time to the music as he jigged around the chairs. The music stopped and everyone jostled happily with each other as they rushed forward to find an empty chair. Prickles was lucky to find one, and seconds later, the music started again, and the game continued. Everyone had a wonderful time, jogging around the chairs, and the game was soon over. The birthday girl won, which everyone was pleased about. More games were played, and Prickles had an amazing time. He got warmer and warmer, and his cheeks glowed with joy. He was having such a wonderful time that he didn't notice his hair gel was slowly drying out. Until one of the large silver balloons that had glitter inside was lifted on a gentle breeze from an open window. It somehow found its way over to the little hedgehog and landed gently on his spikes. And then, pop! It was so unexpected that Prickles didn't realise it was him who had popped the balloon. He looked around and said, Who did that? You did, his friends replied. They pointed to his spikes and told him they were standing up again. Prickles shook his head. It couldn't have been me. As he spoke, sprinkles of gold glitter fluttered down from his spikes and landed on his nose. It was the glitter that had been inside the silver balloon. Prickles sighed. I'm so sorry, everyone. I thought my hair gel idea would work. It doesn't matter, Scamper said kindly. She gently wiped the glitter off his nose and gave him a big grin. Now that one balloon has popped, let's pop them all. Her friends cheered and then grabbed the nearest balloon and began to pop them. Prickles joined in, but he couldn't stop thinking about how to solve his balloon problem. There must be a way, surely. Prickles came up with another idea the very next day, which was lucky because he was going to another party that afternoon. This time it was his friend, Whiskers the Rabbit, who was celebrating his birthday and the party was going to be held in the village hall. Prickles put on his best bow tie and headed to the party. His plan was perfect. 
he wouldn't pop a single balloon. He was absolutely certain of it. The party was in full swing when the little hedgehog arrived, and to his delight, there were balloons everywhere. Some were even in the shape of animals. His friends cheered when they saw him. Hiya, Prickles, Whiskers said. We're going to play pass the parcel. I know how much you love that one. Follow me. It was time for the little hedgehog to put his plan into action. No, thank you, Prickles said. I'm going to play another game. It's a special game, and it means I won't pop any balloons. Whiskers was curious. Really? Tell me how to play it. Is it fun? I'm not sure yet, but it could be, Prickles said. I'm going to pretend I'm a statue, and I won't move, not even a tiny bit. And if I don't move, then I won't pop any balloons. Oh, I like that game. Can I play too? Of course you can. It's very simple. Just stand still. Prickles moved to the side of the room, made himself comfortable, took a deep breath, and then stood as still as he possibly could. A second later, he had an itchy nose, so he gave it a little scratch. Then he took another deep breath and stood as still as he possibly could again. Whiskers stood next to Prickles and took a deep breath, just like his friend had done. Then the little rabbit stood as still as a statue too. Their other friends noticed Prickles and Whiskers standing still and went over to ask what they were doing. Out of the corner of his mouth, Prickles said, We're pretending to be statues. If I don't move, then I won't pop any balloons. Scamper, the squirrel, said, Oh, that sounds like fun. Can we play too? Of course, Prickles replied, trying his very best not to move his mouth too much. His nose twitched. It was itching again, but he didn't scratch it. The other animals formed a line next to Prickles and Whiskers. They shuffled about a bit first, but then took deep breaths and kept themselves as still as possible. The mums and dads looked confused when they saw how still their children were, but they didn't ask what they were doing. Instead, They made themselves a cup of tea and sat down for a while. Prickles gazed around the room and saw lots of big, beautiful balloons resting under tables and chairs. Some were as blue as the sea and others as red as strawberries. He would have smiled in happiness, but he was a statue and statues didn't suddenly start smiling. The itch on his nose came back. He wriggled it ever so slightly as he tried to make it go away. His friends were doing a wonderful job at standing very still. Fudge, the sloth, was lying on the floor and looked like she'd actually fallen asleep. But she usually fell asleep at parties. The room had been decorated with twisting streamers and birthday banners. But Prickles didn't even notice, because all he could think about was the itch on his nose, the itch that wouldn't go away. But he would not scratch it.
No way. Not him. He was a statue, and he absolutely would not move. And then something happened. Prickles suddenly sneezed. It wasn't a quiet, gentle sneeze. It was an extremely loud sneeze, as if all the sneezes he would ever sneeze came out all at once. It was so loud and so sudden, the scamper the squirrel fell over, and Whiskers, the rabbit, got hiccups. Fudge, the sloth, woke up and asked, What was that noise? She blinked tiredly and then went back to sleep. Bobble the badger put her hand over her mouth and started to giggle. Her lovely chuckle caused the other animals to start laughing too and their merry laughter filled the room, causing the parents to start chuckling as well. Prickles began to laugh. He couldn't help it. And then something else happened. Out of nowhere, a blue balloon somehow found its way over to the little hedgehog and landed gently on his spikes. And then, pop! Yay! the animals cheered. Let's pop all the balloons! Prickles sighed gently. His plan hadn't worked. But he would think of a better one next time. And he did think of a better plan. A week later, it was Bobble the Badger's birthday. And as Prickles walked to her house, he couldn't help but smile proudly. His latest plan was a good one. A very good one, and he knew it would work. He arrived at the house, and Bobble's grandma opened the door. Prickles said hello, and gave her the present he'd brought. Thank you, Bobble's grandma said. She frowned. Is it cold outside? Prickles shook his head. No, it's warm. Oh, right. She frowned some more but didn't ask about the weather again. Follow me, the party is this way. Prickles entered the party room. His friends saw him and waved hello. Some gave him curious looks but didn't say anything. Bobble came running over. Hi, Prickles. Hi, Bobble. Happy birthday. Thanks. She frowned at him and looked just like a smaller version of her grandma. Is it cold outside? No. Then why are you wearing a woolly hat? Prickles gave her a big grin. This is my latest plan. If any balloons land on my head, they won't pop. It's a thick hat and none of my spikes can stick through it. Have a feel. Bobble reached up and touched the hat. Yes, it is very thick. Aren't you warm? A bit, but I'll be okay. Are we going to play some party games? Bobble said, Yes, we're just about to start. It's musical chairs first. Prickles said, Great, my favourite. He lined up with his friends around a row of chairs. The music began and they started to move around the chairs. Prickles pulled at his hat. It felt heavy on his head, but he wasn't going to take it off. 
There were dozens and dozens of beautiful balloons around the room, and he wasn't going to pop any of them. Round and round the chairs everyone went. The woolly hat felt heavier and heavier on Prickles' head, and it made him slower. When the music stopped, everyone moved forward. Prickles wasn't as quick as the others, and he had to leave the game. But he didn't mind, because he didn't have much energy left to finish the game. Wearing such a thick hat whilst jogging around the chairs was hard work. The little hedgehog took a seat at the side of the room and cheered his friends on as they finished the game. The birthday girl won, and Prickles cheered the loudest for her. The young animals played other games, and Prickles joined in for a while, but the hat was making it difficult for him to do much, and he had to keep sitting down. But... At least he hadn't accidentally popped any balloons. Three had already landed on his head, but they had bounced lightly on the hat and then moved away. His plan was working. His friends noticed him sitting down and so decided to sit with him. Have the games finished? The little hedgehog asked. No, Bobble replied, but we wanted to sit with you. Why don't you take your hat off for a while? I can't. My plan is working. I haven't popped one single balloon. He smiled tiredly. I am feeling a bit sleepy, though. I think I'll go home now, if you don't mind. His friends asked him to stay, but Prickles kept yawning and yawning. He said goodbye to his friends and left the house. As soon as he was outside, he took off his heavy hat and gave his Prickles a good scratch. He walked home slowly, yawning all the time. Who knew that wearing such a heavy hat could make him so tired? As soon as he reached home, he took himself to bed and was fast asleep in minutes. Back at the party, his friends were still sitting together. Bobble said, Poor Prickles. I think we should stop having balloons at our parties. Scamper the squirrel shook her head. But he loves balloons. You've seen how he looks at them. And he might feel bad if we don't have them anymore just because he accidentally pops them sometimes. The others agreed with Scamper. Bobble sighed. There must be something we can do. I love Prickles, and I love having him at our parties. The animals sat quietly and thought about how they might help their lovely friend. It was Luna, the little white owl, who came up with a solution. She flapped her wings excitedly and said, Oh, I've got an idea. I read something recently in one of my science books, and I think it might help. The animals smiled fondly at their owl friend. Luna loved reading, and she knew lots of interesting facts. Luna said, We should fill the balloons with a special gas called helium. It makes the balloons lighter than air 
and they float high in the sky. If we had those special balloons, they'd be so high above Prickles that they wouldn't touch his spikes. Luna pulled out a small book from beneath her wings. She always had a book or two tucked there, just in case she wanted something to read. Luna opened the book and showed them a picture of some helium-filled balloons. There was also a photograph of a smiling bear who was looking up at some balloons as they floated high above his head. It's like magic, Bobble said. Where can we get that special gas? Luna didn't know, but she called her dad over to see if he could help. When Luna told him about Prickles and her idea, her father said, I know where to get some from. Mr Bumble has bottles of helium in his shop, and he's got lots of balloons too. If you like, I can go there now and get some. The little animals cheered and said thank you. Some of the other parents heard what was going on, and they went to Mr Bumble's shop with Luna's father to help him carry everything. Meanwhile, Bobble and the others came up with a wonderful idea for Prickles. They agreed it was the best idea in the whole world and knew their friend would like it. Not too long later, Prickles' friends gathered outside his home. Some of their parents were there too. Bobble the badger knocked on the door and waited for Prickles to answer it. She grinned over her shoulder at her friends. The knock woke Prickles from his nap. He yawned and stretched his arms above his head. He wondered who was at the door. Maybe it was Bobble to tell him about the wonderful birthday party she'd had. He smiled. He hoped she'd had an amazing time, and his friends too. Still smiling, Prickles opened the door. Bobble was there. So were all his other friends too, and their parents were there as well. Prickles wasn't sure why they were all there, but he opened his door wider and invited them in. His house was only little, but he would find room for them all. Bobble said, Thank you, but we don't want to go inside your home. We want you to come out and join the special party. Prickles scratched his head in confusion. Party? Whose party? His friends called out, Your party, Prickles. It's a surprise party. The little hedgehog was too stunned to speak. He came out of his home and looked around his garden. There were balloons everywhere. But there was something different about them. The big, beautiful balloons were bobbing gently in the air, and each one was tied by a long string to something in his garden. Prickles pointed to a gold-coloured balloon and said, Why is it floating like that? Is it magic? Almost, Bobble said. 
She told him about the special gas and how it made the balloons float in the air. She said it was Luna's idea, but tying the balloons to strings had been hers because she didn't want the lovely balloons to float away to the sky where no one could see them. Prickles slowly turned around and took in the amazing sight. Beautiful balloons were absolutely everywhere, tied to the fence and his garden furniture, his shed and his swing set, even on top of the slide. A beautiful rainbow arch of balloons had been tied between two trees. It looked like a rainbow who had drifted from the sky and come to rest in his garden. Prickles' heart was so full of love that he didn't know what to say for a whole minute. A big smile broke out on his face and he said, Thank you. Thank you so much. This is so kind of you, but it isn't my birthday for months yet. Scamper the squirrel put her arm carefully around his spiky shoulders. This isn't a birthday party. It's a party to say how much we love you. We know how much you like balloons and how you've tried so hard not to pop them. But we don't think you should have to change to fit in at parties. We love you just the way you are with all your wonderful prickles. And from now on, we'll all have these special balloons at our parties. Prickles smiled at his friend and said thank you again. He couldn't take his eyes off the beautiful balloons as they bobbed gently in the breeze. Not only had his friends brought the balloons, they had also brought lots of party food with them too. They had set the food out on picnic blankets at the bottom of Prickles' garden. He'd been too busy gazing at the balloons and he hadn't even noticed the food until Scamper took him by the paw and led him over to it. Prickles and his friends had a wonderful time at the surprise party. They enjoyed the delicious party food and played lots of fun games. They stayed for hours, and not one single balloon popped. The sky grew dark, and stars began to twinkle. The full moon appeared, and shone down on the little animals, many of whom were yawning. The parents said it was time to go home. Prickles' friends said goodbye and went on their way. The little hedgehog stayed in the garden, looking at the balloons in wonder. More stars appeared in the night sky. Prickles yawned and yawned again. He was tired and ready for his bed. He'd had a wonderful day with his kind friends. Moonbeams shone down from the night sky and danced over the glistening balloons. Prickles smiled sleepily. He felt like he was in a balloon dreamland. He moved over to a tree and untied a silver balloon. He held it high and then 
released it. The silver balloon floated upwards and towards the moon, its string waving goodbye to the little hedgehog. Prickles waved back. He whispered to the moon, That balloon is for you. Good night. Prickles the hedgehog went into his home and snuggled down in his cosy, warm bed. And just as the silver balloon had drifted gently to the moon, the little hedgehog drifted gently to sleep. <laughs>